Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAnalog.com. All right, today, I hope you like this video. This took a little while to do. I've been working on it for days, <laughs> for the last two or three days. I had some issues, technical issues and that. Uh, not so much with this, but, you know, batteries, microphones, things like that. Anyway, uh, okay guys, what I'm gonna do is Look at this behemoth transformer. That thing's gigantic. But I got this Class D amplifier over here, 350 watt. I'm gonna put a link. We've looked at this before, but I'm gonna put a link down below so you can look at that. Now, it's kind of an interesting uh, board. It's a monoblock, so 350 watts, 700 watts and four ohms. That's what they say. Now, I think it, maybe it's possible. I don't know if it stay cool, it's pretty efficient. Um, and by the way, my efficiencies have been a little bit lower than advertised, like 88%. Still very good. But, huh, okay, so um, I can only take it up the voltage so high. I'd have to modify the board a little bit, just change out some resistors. So I haven't done that. But with the resistors on the board, I can go up to 70 volts, uh, plus my 70 volts input, okay? So we're going to do some testing. First thing I'm going to use, I, I'm going to show you, I've already done it. I use these power spikes here for my plus minus voltage, okay? I couldn't, I can go up to 60 volts, plus minus 60. I was hoping I could get, you know, a lot of power out, but I was short. So I came over with this behemoth. That's, I don't know what that is, like 20 pound transformer. That's big old behemoth. Um, meant for, I think it was Dynaco back in the day. But, so I'm going to use that, and let's just come over and look at all this stuff I've done. Hey, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> this took me some effort. Uh, or buy me a cup of coffee, the super thanks. Appreciate that. Um, become a patron. And subscribe, guys. Hey, I've been trying to answer questions, but it's really hard for me to keep up. Um, People have a lot of good comments, a lot of good questions, so I've been trying to get through them. But subscribe, that's the way to do it. I hit the Patreons first, if I can, and then I hit, uh, you know, subscribers, okay? And then I try to work my way through. So, all right, let's come over here, take a look at this. It's pretty cool. By the way, I love this new Mix 6 scope. I'm using three differential probes, a current probe. Uh, pretty fun experiment. All right, let me just kind of go over the setup here. The UNIT UTG962E generator right here, coming into the input here, okay? And then our output is coming right here, and I've got these two four ohms loads tied in series so that we get eight ohms, okay? And then I've got 400 watts total power dissipation because we're gonna try to get up to 350 if we can. And, you know, we'll, we won't go there very long because these will get really hot. So they're tied right here. And one end of each of them is tied to the input over here. Also tied to the input, this guy right here is coming from the Keithley THD meter over here, okay? The 2015, I'll show you that. And then we have the differential voltage probes from MIG-SIG, okay? And that's the MIG-SIG scope over here, which I'll show you. And this is the Mixig um, right here. You can see the little box here, and it goes up to the scope. And then we have the Mixig current probe right here, the CP503. These are the two new differential probes and current probes that you may have seen already in the channel. So we're gonna look at the current coming into the power supply. I just wanna see what kind of ripple there might be on this, okay? And then we're gonna look at the, uh, the output voltage, okay? And the THD. And then I have this FLIR multimeter just in case I need it. Uh, just kind of test, make you know, make sure the setup's good as I bring up the voltage. And I'm going to show you. So these three guys here are the input voltage. We got our negative input, our positive input, and our ground, our uh, reference point. Okay. So now here, let me show you the mixing scope. It's right there. All right. Uh, a little bit of glare it's a pretty shiny screen i don't have the screen protector on right now but let me just kind of show you the screen on the voltage right now i have 25 volts per division and we'll probably go to something a little bit smaller than that 
let's go to uh, 10 volts per division, okay? So uh, the current 2 amps per division will start there and 5 milliseconds per division and I'm measuring high and RMS for the channel 1, channel 2. So I think that's the setup there. We got 35 mega points. That's quite a bit. So let me scroll up so I can show you the, the uh, probes if you haven't seen them. We're using these probes here, the differential probe, the DP750-100. It has the automatic sensors, the little pins on it that they included on this scope. You can get these probes uh, without these. And on the differential probe, I have a little adapter, so you can use it with any scope. And it has a strong magnetic coupling. It's You can see how hard it was to pull off. It automatically senses the, uh, you know, which setting, times 50, times 500, or, or the 6 amp, or the, or the 30 amp. And that is the Keithley THD meter, which right now there's no signals, so it doesn't know what to do. As promised, close-up of the board. Now, here's the bridge rectifiers. There's one here, there's one over here. There's one for each one. Uh, the negative cap, cap bank here for the negative voltage rail, okay? And the positive voltage rail for these two caps, all right? They're 4,700 microfarad, 100 volt caps. So we roughly have, you know, it's pretty close, just less than 10 millifarads per side. And we have our output inductor right here and our heat sink with our FETs on the other side of the heat sink, okay? And working with the inductor, you can see the film cap over there. All right, and so, yeah, it's a pretty nice board. There's a little transistor here. I think this is a drive transistor. I'm not positive what that is, but I think it's a drive transistor and a voltage regulator here is what I believe that is. I'm not even positive about that, but we got these little bulk capacitors here, so I'm pretty sure this is the the drive side, the VCC side. So a fairly simple layout. Now one thing to note is these big three watt resistors, you see one here, one on the other side of the board there. Those large resistors, you change the value if uh, depending on the uh, voltage you put in. We're gonna go to a higher voltage, so I think we're gonna be okay with this value resistor, okay? That's pretty much the setup. Now, you're asking, hey, bridge rectifier, bulk capacitors, how come I'm putting a DC voltage in here? <laughs> so that's something I want to show you. I've done this before in other videos, okay? So I got my negative voltage coming in here, my positive voltage coming in here. Uh, so basically the diodes will just steer the voltage into the capacitors, okay? And uh, it'll be fine. So we don't need the AC. We're just going to bypass the AC part, okay? That way I can use a DC input and just make things a little bit easier for this test. All right, to get full power, I'm gonna need to go up to pretty close to the 60 volts. And these guys are each capable of 60 volts, nine amps. Now my dual tracking power supply can only go to 30 volts and about three amps, three and a half amps maybe. So with these two power supplies, I can do it. So that means I have to control the voltage of each dial, this one and that one together, and bring them up slowly together, okay? And I can also set the current up if I want. Right now I'm gonna just max them out and I'll be able to watch the current as I bring up the voltage and make sure that nothing is strange is going on, all right? So this will be my power, uh, positive power supply, this will be my negative. It's like stacking two batteries in series, it's two power supplies in series. So this will be, this will be my top power supply and that'll be my bottom power supply. So I'll have my plus going down to my board. The middle of the two power supplies will come over from negative to positive, and then that's the green wire going down to the board for the ground, and then the negative, the black, will go down to the negative of the power supply, okay? Makes sense? I've done that before. It's just a way where I can use, uh, you know, I, I can use my very, I can bring it up nice and slow, but with this, I can watch the current of each side, and it just gives me a little bit more control. Since we're trying to get max power of this board, I just want to Make sure I can watch, see what's going on. Okay, so for 350 watts, if you can see that, uh, it's V squared over R is equal to power, right? And there's power, so I can multiply, cross multiply my R out, so I can multiply that by eight, okay? And then take the square root, because now it's V squared is equal to that. So shift that, and it gives me 52.9 volts. 
RMS. So that's what I'm going to need. So what I find is on the board, it's going to drop, say, 5 volts. So I need, yeah, I'm 58, 59 volts, pretty close to 60 volts on these things to get the full power. Let's see if we can do it. All right, guys. So I've got the signal coming out at 200 millivolts right now. So I'm going to bring up the power splice together and we'll see what happens. I am up to 5 volts, 10 volts. Told you it's multi turn pots, takes a little while. 15 volts. I think it's around 30 volts each or 25, 30 volts is where the LEDs on the power spike come up. Okay, I'm up to about 28 volts, 29, 30. Oh, I just saw the LED start to blink on. And they kind of pulse until you get the power spike up high enough where it stabilizes. Okay, I'm up to 42, 45, 46. Okay, we're up to 50 volts, 55. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just go right to 60 volts and we're there. All right, so let's go ahead and bring up the signal and I'll open it up so we can see it better. That's the waveform. Let me bring it. Uh oh, let me bring up the uh, trigger just a touch and I'm gonna bring up the current a little bit. There we go. See a little bit of ripple going on. Not much. Go to half an app. Whoop. There we go. Yeah, it's not. It's looking pretty good actually, huh? Okay, there we go. What do we got? 25 volts RMS. I'm going to have to go a little smaller on that. 25 volts per division. Okay, we're 39. Oop. Okay, the RMAT or the THD is 0.02. Right there's still okay, that's look that's getting worse. So it's interesting, it's not that terrible. It's 0.16. So right there is looking better. It's a high frequency stuff. Let's look at that. Okay. Well, you can see the high frequency noise on that, right? That looks better. But THD wise, 0.02, it's probably because I don't have THD plus noise. So right there is looking better. And we got 37, and that's 40 volts. So we're, I, I don't see us getting, without having higher voltage rails, I don't see us getting there. So about 37 volts RMS with 60 plus or minus 60 volts. And I got 1.46 amps on each power supply. I'll freeze that just for a minute, and let's go ahead and uh, drop the signal, power down for a minute. All right, guys, so um, plus my 60-volt power supply rails, that's 25 volts per division, so we got 50 volts. And right here, you can see the high is 47.5, so it's it's saying about 47.5. I don't know. It looks like the peaks are a little bit higher than that. It's some of the high frequency noise and uh, 37 volts RMS, still pretty good power though, right? And uh, the rip, the you can look at the current ripple coming into the power spike. That's not too bad. That's uh, 400 milliamps per division. It's about uh, 292 milliamps RMS. So I what, what that's checking is the bulk capacitors to see how uh, DC it is coming in. You know to charge up the caps. It's pretty darn good, I think. Uh, that's looking good. So, uh, pr probably need some high frequency capacitors on those bulk capacitors to help clean up some of the noise. But yeah, it's looking actually pretty good. THC looked great. I need to do THC plus noise. Maybe we should do that. All right. So, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and save that image. All right. I'm going to save that screen for the heck of it. And let's go ahead and start it over. And this time I got the THD plus noise. Let's see if it looks any worse. I think it'll look a little bit worse. Turn on the power splice. And let me bring that signal up again. I'll try to come up a little faster this time. We're up to 20 volts each side, 30 volts, 40. I'm a little more 
confident this time, so I'm coming up fast. So we're right at 60, 61.5. I got an H power spice, so maybe we'll get a little bit more power. Let's try it. Okay, so right there, probably 37 volts RMS, and we got 0.23% uh, THC plus noise. That is pretty darn good. I'm gonna bring the power spikes back down. Imagine that resistor is gonna get super hot. Yeah, they're not bad yet. That was not up very long, right? All right, guys, look at this monster transformer I have. Uh, this came from a, a guy I used to know in North Carolina that built transformers for some of the high-end audio companies. Wasn't supposed to tell the name. Now I can't remember who it was. I kind of do, but it uh, might sound something like Dynaco. <laughs> anyway, big old transformer. Uh, you have two parallel windings on the primary side to put all that power into this guy. I think I'm going to just use uh, one winding right now. So... I had taken them out of this for another test that I did on another project. So we're going to bring in power into the, from the Variac into here, okay? And on the secondary side, we have two sets, right? Because we have two windings on the output. One of them will be for the plus uh, input. One will be for the minus. I mean, they're both AC, but you know what I'm saying. One will come into the uh, terminal right here. There'll be a common pin between these windings. They'll be stacked. And then what I think it's going to be is red, yellow, and then red, yellow. But they're going to be stacked on top of each other, right? So we'll have a yellow one and red one connected. And then yellow will go to one end and red will go to the other side. And that will give us our two AC inputs. But I want to make sure I got the phasing correct on this. So I want to look on the scope to make sure they're in phase, okay? And then that way, you know, because I don't want them out of phase, I want to, when I connect them together, I want to know that those two windings are moving together, okay? So let's go ahead. So I got two differential probes, by the way. I've got the, the one on the scope that I had before, but I added this DP10013, okay? And we're going to go up to the scope, and we're going to bring up the Variac, and we're going to just see if these guys are in phase. All right, one thing I want to point out is the first differential probe, it is uh, times 500, and it is set by what's, you know, the differential probe on the scope. The scope knows what the setting is because it's got that uh, special connector. This one, it does not know. So it's on 50X to match what is on the probe, okay? So I've got that matched up. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up the voltage. And we'll see. I could turn off the current, the blue one in between. Let me do that. Okay, turn off that. So now we, and I could put one of these guys slightly, move it just so, because it's kind of hard to see that they're on top of each other. I'll move one just a little bit away from the other. And there's very, yep, they're in phase. So the coloring does match the way you would think. And by the way, uh, yeah, so also the voltage value, we got to figure that out, right? I might not be able to bring up the input to the full 120 volts because I want to get the max voltage I need to get that uh, 350 watts out, but I don't want to go above. All right, guys, so let's go over the setup. I got the primaries in parallel now, okay, so we can use a, get the full use out of this big old honking transformer. And then on the output, the yellow and red, the center part, goes right down to the center terminal, goes down to the center input, the AC terminal right here. And then the red and the yellow go to the 
outsides, the AC inputs. It doesn't really matter polarity at that point. We just want to make sure the two output windings on the transformer are in series, properly in series and phase. So that's why we check that. And uh, yeah, so now, by the way, I hope the audio is working when I check that. So I did check that, put differential probes on each one to make sure they're both uh, going in the same phase, both sinusoidal. So hopefully that worked. If you didn't see that, it's because the audio was off. I noticed my batteries in my microphone were dead. One of the many things I got to pay attention to. <laughs> so the input generator is right over here, okay, like it has been in the other tests. Got a lot of differential probes, all kinds of stuff going on. I'm looking at the current right here coming off of this winding, okay? So one of the windings, we're going to look at the current with that current probe. And then channel one, we're going to look at the input voltage, okay? And that is these probes right here, these two differential probes coming down to the input block right here. So across one of, just one of the input windings, all right? And then channel two is going to be this current, the input current. And then channel three is going to be the output. The other differential probes right here, looking at the output right here, okay? And also we have the THD, the Keith Lee meter, look at the output. And then channel four is this differential probe over here, this MIG-SIG DP10007 over here, looking at the output, those wires I soldered to the bulk capacitor so we can see what kind of ripple we get. So just just remind, uh, channel three is this differential probe, the DP10013. All right, so let's go up and look at the screen. All right guys, so channel one, you can see it says input, 50 volts per division, see that? You can see it over here. You can see these things are screen. I'm gonna to try to keep my hands away so the camera doesn't focus on me. Channel two is the input and it's a current set one amp per division. You can see that over there. And then channel three is the output. That's going to be our output AC signal. See it's AC coupled, right? So all these top three are all AC coupled, but the bottom one, channel four, is the uh, bulk capacitors, the output bulk capacitors. Okay, so I just called it output. I guess I could have called it bulk capacitors or bulk or something. So, all right, there we go. Now, the idea is that we're gonna bring it up so that this voltage comes up to, it's 10 volts per division. We wanna get 70 volts. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, it's gonna be right around here. May as well turn on the measurement for that, right? So let's get channel four and we'll just do RMS, to make you know, count for ripple and everything, okay? So, there we go. And I guess I could uh, look at channel three as well. And we'll do RMS on that as well. Okay, let's get channel three. And we'll do RMS on that as well. Whoops, I get it. Okay, there we go. It's kind of cold in the lab, so sometimes my fingers aren't warm enough to, uh, for the touch screen. <laughs> Okay, that was about 200 watts, just over 200 watts. Let's try that again. Let me check my resistors there. Getting warm, but not bad. All right, let's get that voltage back up. We want 70 volts. I think you're gonna have to be over 70 volts on that to get um, the power out. So, and I think, yeah. We're not quite set up to do that, I don't think. So here we are again. Let's see if we're running the same problem. Yeah, so I'm at 1%. All right, so there's that 40. Yeah, and then see it starts getting ratty. And uh, oh, well, actually, okay, I see part of the problem. The voltage has dropped down to 65 volts. So here I got to crank up the voltage of the rails a little bit more. It's the regulation of the transformer. It's being loaded down just a little bit, even though it's a big honking guy. Okay, there's 70 volts again. Okay, let's see if we can get a little higher. Yeah, maybe there's 44 and 40. So we're about 40 volts, I'd say. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and freeze that. 
But I'm going to get more waveforms first. Okay? So now you can see the current in there, right? That blue waveform. That's the current charging those bolt caps. That's that low frequency pulsating power supply that we have. Uh, you know, pulse on, pulse on. So, yeah, that's what you get. So, those pulses, by the way, I mean, it's 2.8 amps RMS, but 6 amps, 6.4 amps peaks. So, we're at 5 amps per division, and those things are pretty high, right? Let me turn off the our signal for a minute. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty high, I think. So, yeah, that's your input current charging up uh, the capacitors. And there's our uh, capacitor bank. And it looks like there's a little bit of rip on that. I don't know if it's looking too bad. Here, let's zoom out a little bit. There's the high frequency switching from the Class D. But the low frequency, the low frequency charging current is, you know, you can kind of see that low frequency... I could filter that. Uh, this scope allows you to filter. So I could do a low pass filter and clean that up so we could just see that ripple. But it's not too terrible. So yeah, even if we keep the voltage on the rail at 70 volts, uh, you can kind of see some of that distortion. Some of that's because of this high frequency noise. So. We need some high frequency caps on those bulk capacitors to help that. And maybe we could get up to 44, but I don't think we can get it much higher. All right, and by the way, I'm wearing glasses and really careful. I got the Variac over here. Got a couple different power meters here. Uh, I got this Voltec back here reading, give me power. Plus I got this little guy. You know, these little guys here that you've seen probably, I can review this if you'd like me to. But these guys are pretty inexpensive, and they actually work really well. So, all right. Um, I got out over 200 watts, okay? Pretty clean power at 40 volts. 40 volts RMS, 8 ohms, that's just over 200 watts. So, that's still pretty impressive, you know? One of the things you may notice, you know, those big spikes of current, right? over, you know, what are they? Um, you know, 6.4 amps peaks. Well, when you have 6 amps going through your winding, um, you got some DC resistance in there. Just all those, I mean, that's a lot of wire on there. So, you're going to have some voltage drop. You saw how I had to adjust for that, right? Even this big transformer, I still had to adjust for that. It's called a transformer regulation, where when you once you load down transformer they can drop 10 percent easily and uh and we saw that as again again a big old transformer when you're at max power because of these low frequency switching power supplies where those diodes are commutating on and off when they switch on you only have a narrow spot where you can charge that cap because you have to wait until that ac voltage coming out of the transformer gets above the uh, the DC value on the capacitor, right? And so you, the capacitor can't charge to the peak of the waveform. I mean, it just couldn't do that because it's being loaded down, right? And if it was at the peak, then the peak, the sine wave could never charge the cap. So it's just impossible, right? You have to discharge the cap a little bit for you to charge it back up. So you're getting some regulation. Well, you're getting some rip on the on those caps and. And for 2.8 amps RMS, you get 6.4. You get more than double the RMS value and peak value. You know, typically the RMS and peak is different by square root of 2, right? 1.4, basically. But no, in this case, it's more like 2.4. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot. I, I didn't do the math, but 6.4 versus 2.87 RMS. So that's the problem with the low frequency switchers. Uh, if you want to get a lot of power out of Class D, it's kind of crazy to use the old-fashioned slow free, uh, low frequency switchers, right? You want to use switching power supplies, which I think I have a couple up here that, you know, maybe I should do a video of that. I think I bought two of them and I haven't used them yet. They're still in the box. Uh, I'm not sure if they're the right voltage. I think they might be 65 volts, but still, two 65 volt switchers with this guy, 
would be a very efficient power amplifier capable of close to 200 watts, maybe at 65 volts. I don't know, you know, 175 watts. Even that, pretty darn good. So you get two of those boards, and uh, you got plus, you know, you got two channel, 175 watts. You could double that into four ohms, which you really want to, you know. Amplifier should double when the resistance drops in half, right? A lot of amplifiers don't, but they should. Because if you want linear amplification, lin linear power, and if your speakers, which no speakers perfect 8 ohms, well, are there? Maybe electrostacks might be more steady. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But anyway, most drivers, uh, they have a ohms vari variation, right? And as that ohms is changing, you want the uh, signal not to change. So your power has to be linear, has to be... Uh, has to grow linearly so anyway um, I think this guy probably could be capable of 400 watts at a 4 ohms I guess I could try that what do you guys think let me know in the comments what you think what you like to see uh, any more experiments with this board you know I'm tempted to buy another one of these boards stick two of them in a the box which is with the switching with uh, switching power supplies so if you guys want to see that uh, it's a shame. I've got a bunch of, uh, of these big transformers, and I don't know what I'm going to do with them. i got a bunch of big caps, too. Big old Coke can style caps. Not as big as that. Those are probably the biggest ones I have, those big blue ones back there. But I've got some big old caps, uh, bigger than Coke cans, that I bought when I bought that when I thought I was going to design a bunch of Class A, B amplifiers or Class A's. But... Wow. Okay. I better sign off. This video is getting long. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, two thumbs up to my patrons. Thank you. I appreciate you guys' support. And hope you guys like this video. Give a thumbs up to the video. That's a free way to support it. Patreon link's down below. Super thank button's down below. And uh, we'll see you next time.